Hey, it's Carl from Electric Bike Blog, and I'm here to talk about the Chevy Volt battery pack. So um, I'm really into electric bikes, and I'm really into batteries uh, and using them for sort of big, powerful things. And I kept running up against this wall where it's like e-bike batteries are just like super expensive. So if you want to get a good one kilowatt e-bike pack, you're looking at, you know, between... 700 to a thousand dollars um and and i just needed a lot of power for very little money so i started looking at different packs and the one that really stuck out for me was the was the chevy volt pack and the reason is is because it's a 352 volt pack uh all together but they did it in these chunks of uh batteries that were 44 to 22 44 volts nominal or 22 volts nominal and there's two 22 volt nominal packs and then there's seven 44 volt nominal packs and uh, what you can do is you can buy one of these packs from a junkyard i paid about 1500 dollars, and i was able to get mine from a junkyard that was like 40 miles away uh and they load it uh with a forklift into your pickup truck bed and you just drive it home uh, and so when you start looking at cost per usable kilowatt, it's just a really good deal. So $1,500 got me uh, close to 12 kilowatt hours of usable power. Now that's only like less than $2 with electricity, but um, when you start looking at cost per kilowatt, it, I just haven't found anything out there that's that's comes close. So this Volt that I got, um, it had 60,000 miles on it. And when I took the pack apart, it took me about a day uh, to take the pack apart. I was just really impressed um, with the engineering. And, and uh, apparently GM spent a billion dollars on engineering the Volt. Uh, and this pack is it, just really, everything about it is just really well put together. Um, and they designed it so that it could do 300 amps continuous. So it is a liquid cooled pack. But the reality is, is that you're never going to use it in an It's unlikely that you'll use it in an application that's going to draw anything more than 300 amps just very quickly, maybe for a motor startup or something like that. And then we'll probably pull 100 to 200 amps. Um, so in most of the applications I wanted, I wanted to pull 20 to 50 amps. So it's a really small amount of power. So the nice thing about that is that even though the pack isn't designed to be air cooled, if you're using... Uh, a very small amount of the pack's uh, capacity, then you don't need to cool it at all. So uh, that was what was really appealing to me. The other thing is I started doing some research on the internet, and a lot of people have been using the Volt Packs to power their off-grid homes uh, without a BMS, and the packs had stayed balanced um, for sometimes five, six, seven years uh, or more, there's people that have never balanced their packs, and, and that just sort of speaks to the design engineering and the quality of the lithium packs that come with the Volt. And, and I'm not a GM fan, I've never owned a GM car, I've owned probably 40 cars, I've never owned a GM car. Um, uh, but I do have to say that, that the Volt pack is, is really great. So, um, the, converting a pack from a Chevy Volt is not for everybody. It's exceedingly dangerous. The whole time I was doing it, I was sort of super afraid of like getting electrocuted or having the pack blow up in my face. Um, and that didn't happen. Uh, once I started uh, taking the modules that I had broken down and using them, um, I, I had some problems with my electric tractor. So my contactor welded open, uh, and that's something that uh, can happen to contactors if you don't use a pre-charge resistor. So I'm gonna wire in a pre-charge resistor uh, and, and the idea is, is basically because you've I'm wiring it without a controller, it's just hooking the motor directly up to the battery pack. As soon as the, the 200 amp contactor trips, uh, there's a huge arc inside the contactor. And anytime you have, uh, you know, DC power with a lot of amps, you're going to have that. You're going to have a huge arc. And, and the arc is so powerful, it can actually weld the contactor together. Um, and so... Uh, with a pre-charge resistor, you're basically just hooking up a little switch with a, with a, with a resistor, and what it does is it charges the other side of the motor. It doesn't have enough power to actually start the motor or do anything, but because there's electricity, the same voltage DC electricity 
on the wiring side of the motor as on the other, as the feed side of the contact, it doesn't arc the way that it normally would, so it doesn't weld itself uh, open. Or, I'm sorry, shut. So uh, the other applications I use for this volt battery is uh, I use it as a portable electric generator, and it's really a fantastic uh, electric generator. So I, I really can't uh, deal with gas. Um, I just, I'm very sensitive to it. I don't like dealing with gas cans and the smell. Uh, and, and I do a lot of construction work, so I'm building a tiny house right now that's about um, maybe 500 feet from the house. So the nice thing about having this electric generator is I can hook it up to an inverter, turn the inverter on. Uh, I put the, the volt battery in the back of my truck so it's protected from the elements. And, uh, and I can run my power tools all day, and then at the end of the day I just shut my inverter off. Now if I forget to shut the inverter off, it's going to continuously draw 5 watts of power, so if I did that for like... I don't know, a year or something, I would probably drain the battery down. But the nice thing is, is you don't have to leave a generator running um, and, and you have power available all the time. You just plug in an extension cord and you can use all your power tools. So uh, the problem with power tools is most of them have electric motors and most of them have a motor startup. So the, like the most powerful, I've got a 12 inch uh, blade chop saw and that pulls a lot of power. And uh, so there's two different um, inverters AC inverters I bought. One I bought that was just a little bit over $100 on uh, Alibaba. And and that one claimed to do 5,000 watts, uh, and I didn't expect it to, and it, it barely does like 500, maybe 600 watts if I'm lucky. Uh, for, a, you know, if I do more than that, it basically shuts off after like 15 or 20 seconds. So, um, that didn't really work for my needs because most of my power tools draw a lot more than that and, and they need a lot more power. So then I went on Amazon and I looked at all the reviews for 48 volt inverters. Now most inverters are 12 volt. Uh, they're designed just to be hooked up to one lead acid battery. Um, but the one I, I left, I'll leave a link uh, in the comments. The one I found uh, people had been running air conditioners off of and, and been pretty successful. And so an air conditioner is a good test because um, you do have a, the compressor motor has pretty high demands for startup. And then when the compressor is running, it actually draws quite a bit of power. So uh, if you're looking, and, and the one I bought cost about $350 from Amazon, and it claims to do 3,000 watts continuous or 6,000 watts peak uh, startup. So, so the top right here, this is really the dangerous part. So each of these tabs you see is the, uh, is the battery coming up, the tabs on the battery. And, and the worst thing you could do is basically like when you're doing a ratcheting, tightening these down or something, is if you drop the ratchet or anything metal uh, and these contact each other, then you're going to have a massive discharge and lots of sparks and it's going to arc. Uh, and so you want to take your rings off. You don't want to use metal tools. You want to just be exceedingly careful to not touch any of these tabs together. So these uh, bolts right here, they don't do anything. They don't have any charge. They're just used to, they've got little... Like they, they look like bus bars and it holds the battery together. Um, and then for the lid, you really want to, you can see here, I've got uh, basically the way I make these connectors is I put this piece in a pair of ice grips facing up. I heat it up with a, with a propane torch and then I just fill it uh, almost the whole way with solder and then I plunge uh, the wire in there. And, I, and, and then just make sure not to move the wire for like 30 seconds while the solder dries. So I've found that that's an incredibly reliable way to make these connectors instead of using crimp connectors. You can use crimp connectors, but you have to have a huge tool that puts tons and tons and tons of force onto the connector, and I just don't have that tool. So the other thing you can see is I use these uh, XT90 connectors, and this green L... Uh, shows that it's one that has a little resistor in there. You can see how it's got uh, two things for the feed, and that is an anti-spark system. So these are pretty critical. You can get them for about uh, seven or eight bucks uh, per pair on eBay or uh, on Hobby King, and I usually recommend getting them with the with the eight to ten gauge wire. These are ten, uh, but it's really hard to solder these properly. Uh, I've done a few, and I've done a lot of ones badly, and I've done a few good. Uh, so I always get them with the pigtails because it's just incredibly challenging to get a good solder joint on those XT90s. And they'll do uh, 90 amps of power continuously, but they will melt if you overdo it. And if you use the ones that are not anti-spark like this, 
there's a good chance you're going to get sparks. So I had a bunch of sparks while I was working on it. Uh, one when the contactor was was shut closed and I had to pull the contacts apart and then put them back together just to see if the contactor was frozen and I completely destroyed the connector because it arced so badly. The other time I had a really scary arc was I had moved the inverter out to my truck and it, uh, somehow I bumped it and turned it on and I plugged it into the battery pack and there was a huge spark when that happened too. So make sure your inverter is shut off when you plug it into the pack um, and so you don't get a spark. The other thing to do is when you're plugging a bunch of these together in parallel, which I do, and I'll show you, I've got um, a cable that I just buy that's like a uh, Medusa cable. Uh, when you're plugging a bunch of these packs together, I would just be really careful. So uh, check all the packs for voltage before you do it and make sure they're extremely close in voltage. By extremely close, I mean they shouldn't be any more than 0.1 volt uh, uh, difference. So you can see here the lids that I use. Basically, there's these big plastic lids, and I just you can see here I cut it with a chop saw, um, and you just sort of measure it and cut it to the right size. And then there's a bunch of tabs that are sticking up, um, and so I just break those off with a pair of pliers, and then I just cover up all the holes with, um, with Gorilla Tape. And you can see here that that just sort of fits down nicely on top, and it protects you from accidentally um, shorting out the, the stuff on top or, you know, and it'll give you a little bit of liquid protection, not much. The other thing is there's these steel plates on the end, so I left them in uh, where the, I could, but some, some of them didn't have the steel plate on the end, which is fine. You can see here, I just, where it didn't have the steel plate, I just basically just used some washers. So that's one of these, and you'll get uh, eight of these packs, and then there's also two 22 volt packs that you can just sort of combine together and just put a, a bus thing on it and just make sure you know it was positive to negative for the and that would be one 22 volt pack and then this is the negative and the positive and what you want to do is tie together on I guess it's on this side the bus uh, the bus bar and just use the bus bar that came with the battery and then you get a 48 volt one and it should be the same voltage you should be able to tie it in parallel with all the other 44 volt ones which is what I did so this is going to show you the setup in my truck. I've just uh, I've got uh, seat belts that are sort of zip tied together to hold it in, and then I've got five modules here. So that was the module that had a steel band on it that was originally a full 48 volt module. So that one's left original, and then uh, I've got a little one here, and then two more modules together. The two modules together are about 80 pounds, so they're pretty hard to move. Um, and then here. You can see I just bought a charging cable from eBay. It has a whole bunch of ends on it. So you have to be careful. These are actually live. Uh, so if I got a screwdriver or some piece of metal here sticking on those, it would make an awful mess. I should really cover those up with duct tape. And then that goes to a 3000 watt. This is the Amazon inverter here. And, uh, and I basically what I do, because I don't want to use a really big wire, is I just use multiple connectors. So this is actually connected to the battery with three different connectors. And that helps share the load without having to use one really big wire. And you can see here, I just turn it on. And uh, you don't wanna charge these packs over about 51 volts at most. And uh, I found that the 48 volt Luna charger, if you set it at 80%, works pretty well for that. So um, yeah, there's that. So as far as BMSs are concerned, I'm running these without BMSs, uh, and it's the first time I've done any e-bike or, or lithium batteries without BMSs. It's extremely dangerous, but because I'm keeping these batteries in a $600 truck that I don't care about, if it explodes, literally, I don't care if the truck blows up, um, it's really not that big of a deal. So, um, and I'm going to keep an eye on the different, uh, see if the, the cells get out of balance over time. But I, I just don't think that they will. So it's really important that you remember that these packs are 44 volts nominal. They're not 48 volt packs. They'll work with most e-bike controllers, uh, 48 volt controllers, because for most e-bike controllers, there's a voltage range. And the, and the voltage shutoff generally isn't below 40 to 42 volts. So a 44 volt nominal pack will spend most of its life at 44. Once it starts getting below about 30%, it'll start dropping dramatically and it'll go below 44. The nice thing about lithium packs 
is they don't have that voltage drop off. 